Hello everyone, welcome to DIY Design by CCW. Thank you so much for clicking on my video and I hope you're having a great day so far. Well, as you can see, I've got several things here, pieces here in front of me. Uh, I've got a thrifted bowl, a couple of Dollar Tree cylinders, another thrifted uh, cylinder, and I found a thrifted glass ginger jar. Now I got it for a buck, because it was missing a lid, but I'm gonna see if I can use the bowl here uh, that you see in front of me to create a lid. Now, I've got several sizes of floral rings and I'll share with you in a little bit what I'll be doing with those. Also, some other uh, bling such as brooches and things like that. Now, I will be doing a tiny bit of painting, just accenting um, these pieces with this gold ore paint and it is made by Treasure Gold, one of my, uh, rather it's made by Folk Art and it's a Treasure Gold paint one of my favorites um, again with the gold with the floral rings i've got three sizes that i'll be working with and we'll just see if this diy turns out the way i hope that it will now um, if you're new to the channel i like to leave this in sometimes so that you can see how to prep your glass if you're going to be painting glass or ceramic you really should uh, clean it with alcohol that way whatever you do will adhere just a little bit better now here you see that i'm going ahead and starting the painting so i'm going to start uh, with these Dollar Tree cylinders. Again, I have them upside down because I'm just going to be painting the bottoms and the sides. And a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit later, I'll come back and just add a touch of gold to the rim. And uh, here you just want to make sure that you keep your brush strokes as even as possible and uh, don't overload the paint on the first coat. It's going to come on, if you're using this particular paint, this translucent uh, paint or this treasure gold paint is a little bit more translucent. So you're probably going to have to use maybe two to three coats just to get the look that you want. Here you see I'm coming back and just adding a little bit more. And I do believe I ended up uh, doing three coats and all to get the look that I want. I uh, want it rather. And um, you have to let the coats dry in between um, application, maybe an hour, something like this. You probably could get away with letting it dry for maybe 45 minutes. Now here, as, I'm, as you see, I'm also going to do the same thing to the uh, thrifted cylinder. Just going to add a little paint to the bottom and then you'll see me come back a little bit later and add a little paint around the rim uh, of each of the pieces. Again, uh, basically here I'm just touching up the rim of each of these pieces and uh, this is one where I like to freehand it but you can also add a little uh, painting tape maybe if you know your your hand isn't steady and you know it doesn't always come out perfect I uh, perfect rather I will take a q-tip and some alcohol and kind of clean up my edges uh, a little bit and there you see me doing that. Now again, I did this to uh, this taller piece as well as the uh, smaller thrifted piece, and you'll see that here in a second. And in a moment or two, you'll see that I also did that with the little, uh, or painted rather, the rim of the little bowl that I'm planning on making into a replacement lid for the ginger jar. Again, same technique, just kind of roll the brush uh, around the edge. And again, th with this paint, because it is so translucent, that first coat 
um, is not going to give you much. You're going to have to let it dry and then come back a couple more times until you get just that right amount uh, of gold. And um, that's it. All right, guys. So now I'm going to start on my decorative tray or my vanity tray. And uh, here I'm using a piece of acrylic. Now this piece is a quarter of an inch thick. It's 12 inches round. And the blue that you see is the protective uh, paper that comes on the, uh, or you know, that they place on the acrylic uh, disc so that, um, you know, you don't scratch it or it doesn't get scratched or whatever in transit. So typically when I do these trays, I usually use a mirror, but I wanted this to be a see-through tray. Now, when I ordered the tray, it was supposed to have clear edges. However, the tray came with uh, a blue edge and uh, I wasn't able to get it off without ruining, you know, the, the tray. So here you see me covering that edge uh, with a little bit of gold. Um, faux uh, leather trim and I am going to come back and do a little bit more to the edge too when I'm done or before I'm done with the project. So what I found that if you're going to glue something on like this it's better to wait with this acrylic until you um, glue on whatever it is you're gluing on if at all possible and then you peel off your your uh, protective uh, paper. That way you're less likely, you know, to ruin it or to get glue on it. And although you can get glue off of this acrylic, um, it, it's not easy. You know, I do it with an alcohol dipped uh, swab and it takes a little bit of work. So if I can avoid that at all, I'd like to do that. And, um, you know, if I, I definitely don't want to scratch it either because, you know, once it's scratched, that's it. So I've taken one side off and uh, now I'm going to take the other side off. And uh, so the the gold that I put on did hide that blue um, rim or edge so that it doesn't show up. And uh, now I'm going to go ahead and start building out my tray. So you noticed at the beginning I showed you 12, uh, two 12 inch rings. So, or floral rings. Now you can get these for a buck, buck and a half, something like that. Um, at either Michael's or Joanne Fabrics. They might even have these at the Dollar Tree. I'm not sure they have it in 12 inches, but they might, they might. Um, but anyway, these floral rings are used obviously for floral arrangements and wreaths, uh, etc. But I'm gonna use it to build up this tray uh, that is going to have, you know, be, be a little bit different, and you'll see that here shortly. So the first thing I did is glue one ring to one side of the tray, and then once I knew the glue was set, uh, I had to clean up a little excess glue there just to keep the project looking neat. And then I'm going to flip it over and do the same on the other side. And then once that's done, I'll set the tray aside for a little bit and then uh, I'll come back, do a little bit more work on it. So the next step uh, for building the tray is to add the legs. I normally do that last, but because of what this tray, what I'm going to be doing to this tray um, and how I'm going to build up the top side, 
you know, this step had to come now. Now, typically I don't measure as much when I'm putting these legs on, as long as they look visually okay. Um, it's, you know, usually what I do, but because of the design I'm going to do on this tray, you'll see that I'm also measuring to make sure that the legs are exactly where I want them, because that's going to be important <clears throat> when I start to build up the uh, top side of the tray. Now for glue, I usually mix either a little bit of E6000 uh, regular and a little E6000 quick hold. One is for quick hold, one is for strong hold, and uh, they work very well together. And uh, that way I know my legs will be secure. I used to use hot glue for applications like this, but you know what? It doesn't hold. Even if you use the Gorilla hot glue sticks, at some point you're going to have a glue failure. So when I'm doing vanity trays and, and decorative trays, I like to be able to use them and sit things on them and not worry about my legs coming off. So <clears throat> there you see me taking a measurement again, just to make double sure. Uh, and again, I'll get uh, the legs in place. Then I'll set this aside and then we'll come back and start on the next step or I'll come back and start on the next step. So here you see I'm beginning uh, to do the next step. Now for this step, I am using some crystals and I'll make sure to link uh, or at least put the name of the crystals down in my description box. They came in a set of three each and um, unfortunately I wanted a few more but they only had two in the store, which gives me six of these uh, uh, crystals. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and, as you can see, I've already glued one on. And what I'm doing here is just working my way around. So you see that I'm using my ruler to make sure that I get the crystals lined up the way I want them to be lined up. And uh, I am using um, pliers, <laughs> needle nose pliers, uh, to keep them in place. So I just continued the same process um, all the way around, continue to glue uh, each of the crystals on and uh, place them where I wanted them to be placed. You can see one there kind of tipping over and I have to go back and catch that and get it into place and hold it there until uh, I got the quick hold to catch. Um, and I just kept going. Now here you see I've gone all the way around. I have all six of my crystals on. So now I'm ready to add my third uh, floral ring for the top of the tray. And uh, basically once I knew that the crystals were secure, um, I used that same glue mixture and added a little bit of uh, the E6000 quick hold and the regular E6000 to the outer uh, top part of each of the crystals and then I secured the gold ring into place um, before I moved on to the next part or the next uh, detail that I wanted to add to the tray. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to add some additional crystals to the tray. Now, since they didn't have the crystals that I wanted, which is more of what you see there. And by the way, those are genuine lead crystal pieces and they did come from Joanne Fabrics. Again, I'll leave the name down in my description box. But um so what I decided to do is to add a little bit more. I didn't feel like the six crystals, you know, that it was enough for, for the look that I wanted. So what I'm doing, and I'm sorry again, it's not, I thought I had gotten a close-up shot, uh, but obviously I didn't get the footage. Um, but what I'm doing is using my needle nose pliers to remove the silver connectors 
uh, for some crystals that I had left over from another project. Now, I want obviously these connectors to be gold. So uh, I did have some gold connectors and guys, all of these supplies, you can get them anywhere uh, that they sell supplies for making jewelry. I just happened to get these from Joanne Fabrics. Now, I also sometimes order these online in larger quantities. And uh, begin, again, I'll leave all that information down in the description box. So I'm connecting three of these little crystals here. Uh, again, removing the silver jump rings or silver connectors, adding gold. And uh, I'm going to go all the way around the tray and place this, the little connected crystals in between the other crystals. And, um, you know, hopefully in the end, this will turn out uh, kind of like I hope, uh, at least what I have in my mind anyway. And uh, again, using the same uh, combination, I'm using the E6000 Quick Hold Glue and uh, the um, uh, regular E6000 so that I get a quick hold and a strong hold. I don't want to have a glue failure and have to come back later and glue anything on my tray because again, I do plan on using it. There you see, I was about to use a clamp, but the clamp, uh, you know, was a little bit too strong of a hold. Uh, so I found that it was better for me just to hold each of the crystals in place for a few seconds until the E6000 quick hold glue took hold. And uh, that was it. So guys, I'll let you watch me do this and uh, I'm going to stop talking for a little bit. I'll be back when we get to another part of the DIY. The last touch here for the tray, I'm going to go ahead and add a little of this silver uh, bling wrap, uh, rhinestone wrap to the tray. I was going to originally leave it all gold and then maybe just add another bit of gold. Uh, but I love the mixing of metals and uh, I love contrast. And since I'm probably going to do gold and silver uh, with the set that I'm going to make, uh, to use with this tray. Of course, I'll use this tray with lots of different things, but um, for this particular DIY, I knew that I wanted to mix my metals, so I'm going to go ahead and add this rhinestone trim, and then that's it, and I'll set the tray aside and let everything dry. So now I'm going to move on and start adding some embellishments to the DIYs. Uh, first, you'll see that I'm going to work on the Dollar Tree cylinders. Um, now here what I'm using is a little bit of uh, mirror tape, uh, duck mirror tape. 
to add just a little pop uh, to the front of each of the cylinders. And then I'll also add some embellishments. Now, I love these uh, brooches that I'm working with. So again, they also come from uh, Joanne Fabrics, Fabrics rather, and just like the crystal uh, that I used for the tray, these are genuine crystal um, and rhinestone uh, brooches, and I just think they're really pretty. They also have pearls in them as well, and uh, just a pretty gold tone. And uh, here you see I'm just going to add some rhinestone trim just to accent uh, the gold that I paint that I use to give that contrast and uh, once I'm done with that and get everything glued on and secured I'll move on to the next uh, DIY So now I'm moving on to the thrifted cylinder. This is, uh, by the way, a five inch uh, cylinder, five by five, five inches tall, five inches wide, uh, and five inches in diameter. And uh, here I'm just gonna go ahead and use that same rhinestone trim. Again, that trim, uh, this is something you see quite a bit on my channel. I absolutely love it. And uh, it does come from Joanne Fabrics. Now um, I'm securing it with my E6000 Quick Hold, and uh, then I'll get everything cleaned up. Then you'll see me here. I'm gonna kind of work through my design a little bit. Initially, I thought maybe I would put a little strip on the front for a focal point, which is you know something that I typically do. But um, instead, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just cut a more narrow strip and uh, put that around the top and then once I do that I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, some bling for the focal point now for this piece I decided to not use the duct mirror tape like I did for the Dollar Tree cylinders I'm gonna go ahead and add the bling you know directly to the glass now uh, when i get to the bling i'm going to modify it a little bit i'm actually going to take one of the crystals uh, one of the little crystal brooches off of the strand because these are this is a these come the brooches i'm using come in a uh, connected uh, strip and i think there were four on each of these uh, but anyway i'm going to remove one that I'm going to add to the strip I'm going to use for the larger piece for the for the uh, ginger jar and um, basically add another piece to this one to get the look that I want and uh, I'll glue it on with a little mixture of E6000 quick hold and uh, E6000 and voila this piece will be done and uh, I'll move on to the next to the, you know the uh, move on to the next DIY
So now I'm going to start on the ginger jar. Um, and for the jar, I'm going to keep it pretty simple. Um, as you can see, I didn't paint the whole thing, and you saw that in the beginning. Uh, basically, I just accented the top and the bottom. A lot of times when I do pieces like this, I will paint the entire thing, but the way I want to use this piece in my decor and all of these pieces, I'm going to work into my fall uh, decor. Um, I'm doing like a mixed metal look uh, and uh, this will be perfect. But um, here you see I'm just going to add or I just added the same silver rhinestone trim. I'll add some around the top. Um, and then I'll end up adding some more embellishment uh, in terms of the focal point. And then this piece will be done. Now, once I'm done with this piece, uh, hang on because I've got another DIY or two before we get to the finished look. So now I'm going to do some lids and I'm going to need three lids. So I started by painting the edges of these acrylic discs. Now again, these discs, uh, I buy them from Amazon and, uh, you know, that will be, they can, they're available in my Amazon shop. Uh, so I have two five inch discs and I also have one three inch disc. And uh, the five inch disc are rather thin. Um, I believe they're only about a millimeter thick, but the, um, uh, which is one eighth, I believe of an inch. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> but uh, the uh, three inch disc is three millimeters thick. Now, if you remember what I had did is paint the edges of the bowl. And again, this was a thrifted bowl. I think I got it for 10 cents or something. Um, and I'm going to see if I can mimic the shape of a ginger jar lid with this bowl. Um, now here you see that I'm going to be gluing on the uh, rings, the five inch rings. Uh, and again, these are the floral rings. And uh, I'm going to glue one directly to the jar, uh, or rather the, the bowl. And then I will add um, the lid to that, the, uh, the acrylic uh, disc rather, to that and kind of sandwich that disc in between the, uh, the rings. And uh, then I'll add a little bit more embellishment. And uh, again, just hoping that in the end it all turns out and it looks similar to the shape 
uh, and the contour of a lid, you know, a ginger jar lid. Uh, of course, you know I'm going to add a little crystal knob to it as well, as I typically would do on my channel. Now, what's nice about that vase is I can use it, uh, again, for f uh, floral arrangements, but I also wanted to still be able to use it as a ginger jar. And, um, you know, so that's why I'm making this lid. So here I'm going to add a little two millimeter. Uh, once I get this all glued together, I'm going to add a little two millimeter closed chain wrap. Uh, and then I will also come back and add a, a, a little bit more rhinestone wrap, a rhinestone trim rather. And then this lid will be done. Um, I'm also going to make a couple of uh, other lids. I'll do, I'll use this same technique to make one, another five inch lid for the larger uh, five inch cylinder. And then I'll also uh, use something similar to this or a method similar to this. At least I'll be using the rings uh, to make the little three inch lid uh, lids rather that I will need for the Dollar Tree cylinders. So guys, I'm going to stop talking, let you watch me finish these up. And uh, when I come back, it'll be time for the final reveal.
This is how everything turned out. This is a close-up look at the mirror or vanity tray. It's not a mirror. <laughs> and uh, here's how it looks with the set on top. And uh, here we'll take a look at how the ginger jar turned out. And uh, now we're going to take a closer look at everything. You know what? I do like this. I know I say it every time, but I really do like this one. And I do like adding the floral rings to the acrylic lids. I think it gives them just a little more oomph um, and, uh, you know, makes them look a little more custom. And uh, overall, I'm, I'm satisfied with how this DIY turned out. But please let me know what you think down in the description box. Also, while we're taking a closer look at everything, I want to give some shout outs. I first of all want to shout out my newest member, and that is Shanta Brown. Welcome, Shanta, to Candy's Crew. Also, recent uh, new member is Kim Ceylon Bell. Kim, welcome to Candy's Crew, and also Donna Brooks. I really appreciate all of your support. Um, now, there's a members video, new members video coming in the next uh, few days, and I'm going to take you behind the scenes and show you where I bought and what I paid for a lot of the pieces and items that you see in this DIY. So be on the lookout and uh, Candy's crew for that video. So there's another look at the tray. Now I'm going to show you uh, some things from other DIYs. Now, I really like this cylinder. This is made from a Dollar Tree uh, vase, and uh, there's a, obviously a whole set. I'll link that down in my description box. This is my most recent video before the one you're watching today, and it's a two-tone uh, vase and uh, some, you know, four-piece set, actually. I think it sort of gives me a fall vibe. Uh, sort of like a summer transitioning into fall uh, vibe, and that's how I'm going to use it in my decor. So, guys, that's all I have for you today. I really appreciate uh, you coming and watching, and if you're on to this point, I really appreciate that and appreciate you supporting the channel. If you would, please go and visit my other channels, which are Tablescapes by Candy and also the Glam Decor channel. And um, again, like I said, be on the lookout members for a video where I'll share some behind the scenes information about today's video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.